G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. I thought I'd do a little uh, off-season update as to uh, just some news stories circling around the AFL at the moment for those who have perhaps lost a little bit of touch with the AFL over the off-season and there are a couple of stories to cover in today's video. I'm not sure how often I'll do this, I'll probably just wait for a few interesting stories to accumulate before doing a bit of an update as to how things are going. So, first of all, one of the biggest stories uh, that will certainly affect next season is that of Bailey Smith, who has done an ACL uh, during preseason training at the Western Bulldogs, which has pretty much certainly ruled him out of the 2024 season. And this is a uh, a blow from multiple factors, I suppose, when you consider that uh, not only is he going to be an important player for the dogs who are ultimately going to try and get back into finals for a start, and he is a proven quality finals player at that, um, and an important part of their midfield mix when he's up and firing. Uh, but when you also consider this is a contract year for Bailey Smith, uh, we were talking about him as a potential trade option a few weeks back or months back, and uh, ultimately he decided to stay for the Bulldogs to at least see out his contract. Uh, the last time it was discussed, I think the Herald Sun reported that whoever it was, I can't remember if it was John Ralph or not, but they suggested Bailey Smith leaving was about an 80% chance at the time. Now, I'm not saying the ACL makes him more or less likely to leave, but it's interesting to consider what impact that would have. I would imagine part of what Bailey Smith is uh, wanting from the Bulldogs, at least if he wants to stay there, is probably the guarantee of a bit more midfield time as he's been pushed out to a wing and half forward uh, in recent times. And now he's not going to get that opportunity and the Bulldogs are not going to get the opportunity to sell that future to him. So um, really unfortunate news. It has to be said, it's a huge blow for the Western Bulldogs in terms of you know their hopes of getting back into the eight next year. Do they still have the quality outside of Bailey Smith to, p to push for finals? I think definitely yes, but nonetheless, he's a player approaching his prime and a very good at one at that, and uh, that sucks for him. There's a couple of other contract-related stories that have happened, uh, the most significant of which probably Connor Rosie signing an eight-year deal with Port Adelaide, uh, which was, I think it was going to be a contract year 12 months from now. Unsurprisingly, Rosie signed a long-term contract. It's uh, not really unexpected when you consider the season he had for a start and also the fact that he's South Australian and uh, obviously a leader within that football club. An eight-year deal is significant, though, and pretty much... Well, I would say guarantees him to be a power player for life, although we've seen crazier things happen and long contracts don't quite mean what they used to. That being said, he's also been named their captain, which at 23 is an incredibly young age to be captain in the modern game. I know that there's been examples of young captains. I think it wasn't Wayne Carey like 21. I want to say Ben Cousins was 21 or 22. From that era, it was a little more common. It's less common these days, uh, but nonetheless, a huge rap for a kid who is already, you know, one of the young stars of the competition. So the eight-year deal is said to be from 2025 to 2032, and it's valued at approximately nine to ten million dollars. There's also a trigger in that agreement to extend to a potential ninth season in 2033. That is a long time ago. And I just think back to when Buddy Franklin signed that deal where it was nine with an extension for 10 or something like that. Maybe it was just nine, but I remember thinking that was just absolutely monstrous. And now these things are becoming a little bit more common. The other big contract news to emerge in the last few days is that of Sean Darcy, who has recommitted to Fremantle until the year 2030, I believe, uh, which is a huge win for Fremantle. I must say, like, out of all their retention issues they've had in recent times, the ability to lock down Sean Darcy and keep him at the football club, I thought was a imp really important question for them because there was a, definitely a big contract offer from Geelong on the table. And it's actually been reported that uh, by the West Australian that the Cats had offered about a million per season for the next five years. Obviously, the Cats kind of need a Ruckman. He's somewhat local. He's from Vic Country. And he was becoming a free agent in 12 months' time. So that is a huge tick uh, for Fremantle. It does mean they probably do have a lot of salary tied up in young Ruckman. But that's all right. Sean Darcy and Luke Jackson could be a very, very good combo. In fact, it could one day be the best Ruck combo in the league. Just a couple of other news stories to rattle off uh, before we finish the video. There's a couple of proposed rule changes happening at the moment. One of them is related to smothers in general, and with particular focus on that Maynard and Angus Bray sure uh, incident, if you want to call it that, in last year's final series where Maynard jumped up to smother the ball. He missed and then on the way down hit Angus Brayshaw and um, he was subsequently con concussed. Now that went to tribunal and went for about four hours and eventually Maynard was cleared of any wrongdoing. However, it does appear that it is a proposed rule change that now a player who jumps to smother will thereafter be responsible for anything that happens when he hits the ground or a player. Now, I'm not really sure how I feel about this. I mean, at the time in that, with respect to the Maynard incident, it's a tough one. You know, there was, I don't believe there was any intent from Maynard to hit him. Was it a little bit careless? Maybe. Ultimately, the decision was that he got off. Now, the AFL is potentially going to legislate it so that no matter, you know, regardless of intent, 
the player who jumps up in that scenario is responsible for anything that happens after that. So like I said, it hasn't happened yet, but it is something that AFL is considering and reading the tea leaves on this and how the AFL tend to be quite conservative, particularly around con- concussions and somewhat right, rightfully so, uh, I can see this being implemented. The other potential rule change, which has definitely caught my my interest, is that of the sub rule change. So uh, this is only proposal at the moment, but there's no suggestion necessarily that any change will happen. But uh, the league has been, I think, seeking feedback from clubs in terms of their uh, you know stance on a potentially changing the sub rule as it currently stands. For those unaware, it's you can have four on the interchange bench and one tactical sub that can come on and replace a player at any time, but replace them permanently. Previously to that, it used to be that they had to have been ruled out with an injury. So the article I read does suggest that it's unlikely that rule change is actually going to happen because I think everyone's kind of comfortable with where it sits. But one interesting thing I did catch was that some clubs have been pretty strong in arguing for there to be five interchange players and no sub. I had seen, you know, in online circles that there does seem to be a bit of a belief that we were going to a five-man bench and no sub. However, with the wording of this article, which I got from the AFL website, it does suggest no change is likely, but some clubs are campaigning for that. Personally, I think the current system works. I don't think we necessarily need that fifth player. And the whole point of the sub anyway is really to stop players going back on and playing while injured. It gives clubs some ability and freedom to replace those players and give them some peace of mind. And finally, before we wrap up this video, um, there has been the announcing of the fixtures for next year's preseason set of games. Now, uh, this one is going to be two weekends back to back. When most teams are playing two games, there are a handful of teams not playing uh, in the first week. So uh, first of all, we'll go through the rules. It's the full length games, four quarters of 20 minutes, uh, but there will be a squad of 30 players. So your best 30 will play, eight interchange for emergencies, and they'll be playing with no interchange cap, which is nice. So this is usually a good opportunity to see younger players given uh, opportunities, particularly in different roles, um, and you know other players changing roles during games. So that's the interesting part of preseason. So the fixtures are out, and I'll put them on the screen for you as well. Uh, so we, we kick things off with a absolute barnstorm between North Melbourne and Collingwood. Can't wait for that. Nah, I'm only joking. I know that West Coast play on the uh, Saturday, the Feb of 24th, and we're going to get absolutely st- Rolled by Fremantle. Uh, in this set of fixtures, it appears that Hawthorne, Melbourne, the Bulldogs, and Richmond did not organise uh, to have a scratch match. So the first game, the first round, it's all going to be on KO, but it's going to be match simulations. So uh, what's the difference? I guess this round of fixtures isn't sponsored and I guess teams aren't obligated to necessarily play in it. I imagine those clubs are probably going to have their own set of intra-club games. But then we have one round of the proper uh, AFL Community Series fixture. So I don't know if that is strictly is a sponsor, but uh, nonetheless, these are the more legitimate fixtures and these will be on Fox Footy and KO, as you can see below, a fair few regional games. And to be honest, you know, I'm just crying out for some action. So I know that West Coast have Fremantle and then Adelaide. Both of those games are probably going to go horrendously based on, you know, last year's preseason, let alone the home and away season. But nonetheless, uh, I'm still looking forward to it and I'm sure I'll be covering that preseason stuff as it comes around. But that's all I've got for you guys. Um, let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed that you want to see discussed on the channel. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit dry for news, so every now and then I'll probably just do a little video saying this is what you missed potentially if you haven't been tuning in. I know there's a test match on at the moment, um, which has got a lot of people's attention. But otherwise, I uh, hope you're enjoying the content, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.